Okay, I'd like to recap uh, these walk-back measurements. When I made the measurement on the CBT speaker from near to far, particularly out near the end of the array, because you are, in effect, listening to it off-axis, and when you get closer to the array, you're significantly off-axis, and when you get farther away, you're more on-axis, and that compensates for the near-far variation in sound pressure level. Now, conversely, when you're measuring a system like the the three-way system, it has a defined axis. Now, in this case, I mean, this has pure 24 dB per octave linkwitz riley crossovers, and the defined axis is by to right about here. And traditionally, you'll just set yourself down, and you'll sit right here with your ears right at that height, and that's, that's the magic height where you're supposed to listen to this. Now, if you actually try listening up higher or down lower off that axis, it, the response is not very uniform with distance or with frequency as far as that goes. You can't do the trick like you do on this one. Now, uh, one, we, need, we need to now investigate the variation of sound pressure vertically. In other words, make, holding the mic down near low and then raising the microphone up, which I haven't done. But one thing I'm going to start with now is I'm going to hold the microphone at a specific distance in front of the array and start down at the bottom of the array and move up. And uh, I'll hold it close enough so you can actually see the, the shading taking place. I mean, the drivers up here are 9, 12 dB down from the ones down at the bottom. So I'm going to turn the level back up here and get a, a decent signal level on the real-time analyzer. Now, what happened there? You can see that the frequency response stayed quite constant all the way from the bottom up to the top. I mean, in effect, this is kind of like the, the world's best near-field monitor. You can walk, actually walk up to it and listen to it this close, and it still sounds good as it does out, out at, at points far from the system. Now what I'm going to do is try to uh, raise the microphone up directly from the floor on a straight line trajectory to show you what it does there. I'll raise the level back up again. Now I'm going to move back at a more, uh, oh, roughly about two meters or thereabouts, and we'll try the same thing. And one thing I didn't mention before, this style of line array actually measures good above the array as contrasted with a straight line array, and I can illustrate that now. Typically, if you listen to a straight line array, you can't listen to it above the top of the array. 
But this, this style of uh, the, the CBT arrays, you can do that. Now let's try it back this far. This is a more, you might be three meters away. Are we running out of time here? <laughs> okay, that's fine. Let me. Okay, I'm going to turn it on again. We're more like a reasonable three and a half meter measurement distance. Now, as you can see, it's also quite uniform there. You will note some roughness down in the upper base, lower mid area. Uh, and I have no explanation for that right now, but it, we're, as I say, this is the first prototype, and you're actually seeing all the, the warts and everything. <coughs> I mean, it's not, it's not exceptionally smooth off-axis, but the uniformity is extremely good, even off-axis horizontally and vertically. Uh, one thing that I neglected to mention is we we went to Walmart and bought an inexpensive $5 wall mirror, and we placed it on the floor. And we took the... We un a little bit unsuccessfully tried to take the frame off of the mirror and it, and it broke, so you'll see some uh, cracks in the mirror. But this illustrates both the, the visual imagery of the ground plane array and what you see down below the ground. I mean, in effect, we are listening to a, a full freestanding array. Now, do, uh, let me get a visual aid here. This is a a balsa wood model of a freestanding CBT array and uh, a circular arc freestanding CBT array. And the, the shading is set up such that it's, all the drivers near the center of the array are up to maximum. And then it, in steps, it goes 0, minus 3, 6, 9, and 12 as you go to either end. And of course, a ground plane array is effectively, you're just cutting this in half and setting it down on the ground. And then, furthermore, you can actually make the, the height twice as high. And that's what we're trying to illustrate here with the mirror. You, in fact, this is a, uh, a five-foot high ground plane array, which represents a 10-foot high freestanding array. And if you actually look in the mirror, you can see the reflection of the other part of the array that's down below ground level. And so that's what you're looking for, and it, it makes a like a seamless connection between the top array and the bottom array, and it just continues all of the, the drivers ab above the ground and below the ground. And as I pointed out before, the on-axis of a freestanding array is a line perpendicular to the center of the array. And when you drop this down on the ground, on-axis is on the floor. And, I, and we're going to be showing, uh, and a little bit later on, to put the, actually put the microphone on the floor and pull it back, and you can see how uniform the frequency response is on the floor. But as I again pointed out, you're, even though the on-axis is on the floor, you're actually, any reasonable listening point is going to be off-axis of the real array itself. And because it's so uniform, you get all these other neat characteristics by compensating for the sound pressure uh, roll-off with distance and, and in other associated factors. But in any case, you can look at the array in the mirror and actually see it. And of course that represents both the visual ground plane reflection and the acoustical ground plane reflection. Well, one significant question that a person might ask here, 
Don Keel has designed this crazy curved arc loudspeaker that's designed to operate over a perfectly reflective floor, acoustically reflective. It doesn't necessarily have to be visually reflective, but a hard surface like this in any case, uh, concrete. Uh, no, but you might ask, in my living room, I've got a carpet on the floor. What happens? What are we going to do? How does that affect it? Well, the quick answer is that it doesn't affect it a whole lot. And I'll kind of explain why. If you listen, if you frequently listen to a CBT laying down on the floor, which you can with a CBT like this, you can put your, you lay down on the floor and listen to it a foot away from it or lay down here, and it still sounds perfectly balanced. But if you do that with carpet on the floor, you'll notice a high frequency roll off. And that's because the high, the absorption of a rug or an absorber is maximum for grazing incidents. In other words, the high frequency absorption of a rug gets quite significant for grazing incidents, acoustic waves. But in this case, if you actually take the, listen to it at higher points, and it's you know, significantly above the floor, you know, maybe six inches or higher off the floor, the carpeting really isn't all that absorptive. So it effectively, it operates quite well. So these sound quite good over a carpeted floor in addition. And there's still even, uh, potentially even less ground bounce if you wanted to think about it in terms of the three-way system. But basically, this does work quite well over a carpeted floor, except when you get the microphone down near the floor, you'll notice a high frequency roll off. But effectively, for other points above that, it doesn't seem to affect it much at all. We actually ran response measurements, both with and without a carpet on the floor. And that's what we determined. So uh, I would, effectively, I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, turn the level up, and then I will do the pull-away test. I'm starting with the microphone approximately three inches, about eight centimeters away. And one thing we didn't mention before, these... The floor tiles here are 18 inches, and I think that's about 0.45 meter. So you can tell how far back I've gone. So I'm going to turn it up again so that the, the curve is up at the top of the screen, and then, then I'll do the pull away. Thank you.